Hi guys, welcome back to Jungle Flowers Canada. My name is Gronya and thanks for joining me. So guys, this is going to be an art and crafts day. <laughs> so today I'm going to show you how I made some self-watering pots for my lechuza pond. If you haven't seen the video where I made my homemade lechuza pond with my secret ingredient, don't forget to check it out. I will put a link in the description. So, lechuza pond, ready and some pots that I used to make myself watering pots and also some water gauges for some other pots. So this pot here is the newest addition to Dollarama. Isn't it really cute? Hard to find. Um, I only ever found them in two Dollaramas and at two completely different times, but this is a great one for a big plant. However, you can see it does have a hole in the end. So I want to use this um, as a semi-hydro style pot. So what I did, it, some of the water still leaked through but not as much. I actually filled the hole in the center with some glue for my glue gun. So I think we will start with this one. This is really cool. I actually was so proud of myself when I figured this one out. I had to give myself a pat on the back. Okay, so I got a recent import from Ecuador and this is a VCI. An Anthurium Vici or King Anthurium. I hope I said it right because you know me, I'm a disaster for names. And I literally just stuck it into Pawn. Um, I didn't put any of my gauges or anything in and it's been in there. When did the Ecuador order come in? Would it be three weeks ago now? And you can, it's in my greenhouse and it's very happy and I'm, you know, I'm not doing anything special with it. So I thought I'm going to transfer that into this pot with my self-watering gauge. So, what are we going to use for this particular pot? So I have a number of little gadgets that I use for the water gauge, but it needs to have a hole on the top because you know it has to have air in there so that the float will lift. So I went to good old Dollarama and I bought a turkey baster. And this works perfectly. Well, actually, I should plug, oh, I did plug in my glue. I did plug in my glue gun. Aha, <laughs> grimes on top of things today. So this works perfectly and I needed something big enough that would go into these pots. So I will zoom in there and show you guys. So this is going to be the gauge that we're going to use to tell us when we need to add water to the palm. You're going to need a packet of plastic straws. Again, you'll be able to buy these in Dollarama and you're going to need something lightweight to help it float. So look what I found in Dharana. These are floats for fishing. They're fishing floats. They are called fish and foam floats. And I think it was $1.25 for three of them. Now, if you can't get these, don't worry. You can get styrofoam balls and cut off a little bit of the styrofoam and stick it up into the straw. But these just worked so perfectly. And it was just by chance, I saw them and I said, you know, I'm going to give them a try. So let me show you how they fit. So there's a little um, plastic piece there and they just fit perfectly up into the straw. Isn't that cool? Now I do put a little bit of glue around the end just to make sure it stays in place. So what are we going to need to do? Where did I put my turkey baster? Is anybody else like me? I'm not kidding you. Spin me around and I'm lost. Okay, so we need to cut the straw. So that's, it, it needs to be measured from when it's down on the bottom. You want to be able to see it over the top of the pot. So I would want my straw to be, when it's floating, to be up to about here, just before it um, narrows in. So that means I need to cut it slightly shorter than that because what's going to happen is when it's watered this is going to rise up and when it's dry this is going to come down. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut it. What did I say? Where is that there? Okay. So I'm going to cut it um, a little bit below where it starts to narrow out so if you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to cut it about there. Obviously guys, well you probably could use the bendy end, but I don't use the bendy end. Now, you go, so this is going to sit in here. 
So when your pan is dry, it will be here. When you put water in it, this will rise up and you will put a mark on your uh, outer vessel to say, to show you how much water you want to put in. But you don't want it to go all the way to the top because that may be too much water. And you know when you're using hydroponic, semi-hydroponics, initially you want the roots to be above the water line. Th those roots, water roots will eventually grow into the water and that's fine. But initially you want the roots to be above the level of the water. Okay, so what are we going to do? So I'm sorry, my plug is a bit far away. So you can see the hole in there. I'm going to drop glue into the hole. Now, can you see what I did there? Okay, so I literally just filled up the hole with glue. Um, if you don't have a glue gun, you can buy them in Dollarama. They're not quite as good. This is a better quality one. I bought it in Michael's, but you don't need to buy an expensive one. You could by all means go to Dollarama and pick one up. So while that is setting, we now need to Actually, I'm going to put a little bit of glue around this. Now, just be careful. My glue gun is very, very hot. So it will melt this styrofoam a little bit. You see, I just put a little bit of glue around there. I have to do actually a video of my imports that I just received um, about three weeks ago. Um, I'm sorry I didn't do a video at the time, but um, my daughter opened a business and my other daughter went back to work and I was helping out with my grandson. So I really didn't have time to get much done. Plus my laptop went missing. If you saw that post I put up, <laughs> I forgot to do something. You're supposed to put holes in this to let the water in. And I forgot to do that. My husband has a soldering iron. These are very, very hot guys. Please, if you're going to use this, be very careful. Now, I haven't used it on this before. I did use it on my little um, plastic cups. So I'm going to let that heat up. And I'm going to see, will it work so that I don't have to drill these? Guys, I, when I tell you this is hot, I do not exaggerate, okay? So please, 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 if you're using this, be careful. Look at that. Did you see that? Did you see that? Seconds. Seconds that took. So, um, I think I will probably, that is actually way easier than having to drill them. Um, I'm going to plug it out though for now because I won't be using it again for a few minutes. So we're talking about serious burn if this touches your skin. So please be careful. If you feel that you, it's not safe enough for you to use that, by all means, use a drill. Okay, so now I have my two holes and we already have the hole in the top. So we don't need to add a third hole. If this was a sealed piece, we would have to also add a hole to the top. So our pot, our glue gun, and again, we're going to put the glue around like this. And now what I found was easy was to take the pot like, like so, I have to bend down to you, and stick this in here like this until it kind of attaches and then you can go around it with some more glue. Hold it for a minute so that the float doesn't stick to it. And you can also just put it straight down if you want to. Um, I've done it both ways. Now I can tell that this is not really sticking properly. So I'm going to put it back down like this. Now my float has dropped to the bottom. Um, but I don't believe it has stuck to the glue. Okay, so you can see what I've done here. Let me just turn it upside down to make sure. So sometimes, see what happened there? But sometimes if you just give it a tap or shake. Okay, so the float did manage to get attached to the glue, but you can loosen it. There you go. You can see there, I've... Come on, unloosen. I've, this has happened to me before. Right? You just have to kind of coax it. There we go. So you just have to coax it back down. I'll show you from this angle. So I'm going to hold it steady and I'm going to go around it with glue. 
just to make sure that it holds in place. And it doesn't matter, all this glue on the bottom really doesn't matter. I'm not really hitting the spot there, am I? And it's okay if it's not fully sealed because it does need to take in water. We just want it really to be secure so that it doesn't fall out. So just hold it down there. We need another glue stick. Oh, sorry, I'm sending everything flying. Okay, so you can just, you know, try and drop it into the position because it's hard to kind it. Of, I kind of made a dog's dinner of that. Before we put in our pawn, we're going to need to get a permanent marker and we're going to need to mark our levels. So, so we need to take a marker and we're going to mark when our water is empty. Okay, so we want to fill the water just above where the holes are that we put in. There we go. Okay, so I filled just above the holes and now you can see that the straw has risen. So there's probably about an inch and a half of water in there. So this is going to be fine for this because you can see that's going to be well above the water line. So now I'm going to take my marker again and I'm going to mark where I need it to be when I fill it. Okay, so we have watered and it needs to be watered. Can you see that? Okay, so now let's pour that out. And let's fill, fill our pond and put in our plant. So I'm just going to do like you would with soil. Put in your palm. Okay, I'm going to take my anthurium. So okay, that's pretty good, right? And now we're going to top it up with the palm. If anybody has any suggestions for me with these chunks, I presume you just like plant them. Are you supposed to leave a little bit of the chunk out? I, I actually don't know. And it's very hard to find that information anywhere on the web. So if anybody has any tips for me, if you could tell me, that would be amazing. Okay, so now we have filled it up with our palm. And we are going to put in, now I am using liquid dirt at the moment, but I will, as I said in my palm video, once a month I will fill them up with the nutrients that I bought for Lekka. And I'm just going to try that. I don't know how well it's going to work. And um, this is going to be just a work in progress, a bit of trial and error. If anyone else has any suggestions, I would appreciate it. There's a bit of glue. So let me get my watering can. Okay. okay, so now I have my water with my liquid dirt and I'm going to tap up my pot and we're going to watch out for the straw. So can you see the straw is moving? So I might have gone a little too far, but it's okay because the, the chunk doesn't have any roots at the moment. So you do need to kind of slow down when you're getting, when it starts to move. So you can see there. So now this will tell me when there's no water in it. Okay guys, I'm gonna try and get through this because I have a couple of different methods. So another method, again, it's the, um, the same thing with the float, except this time I bought these test tubes in Party City, and I think it was eight ninety nine or something like that for 24 of them. Okay, so I use these in these smaller pots. So this is my Matilde. I actually just took it off its trellis. And I'm going to try this in ponds. You can see I have it here in soil. And these little pots don't have drainage holes. So the irony of this is this came to me in pond from one of my plant friends, Paula. <laughs> I took it out of pond, put it into soil, and now I'm putting it back in pond. She's probably laughing, saying, told you so. But anyway, I, uh, it took me a while. It takes me a while to get there, guys. I need to do, do a lot of research before I try something. So um, I'm glad I have finally just bit the bullet and decided to do this. So we are using the plastic test tube. They're actually shot glasses and they're from Party City. 
and you can see they fit in here. Lovely and same deal we need to make two holes but because there's no hole in the top we also need to make a hole in the top and the same thing we're going to use our straw and we're going to use our float. I'm so sorry that my camera is wonky can you see that it's my tripod I had it in my car and I must have banded off something because it won't sit straight anymore. Okay, so when you're unpotting, you need to get as much of the, the soil off the roots as you can. Now, if you can't get it all off, you know, that it, it's not the end of the world. But what I usually do is I try to unpot them when they're dry because I find you have a better chance of getting it off. And then I just rinse it under the tap. But make sure that you put your stopper in your sink because you don't want all this soil going down. Now, this is actually quite clean. There is not too much soil on this, but I'm still going to give it a rinse. Just put my, my Matilda there. I'm just going to take the, so we're going to try the soldering gun again. Now, I, as I say, I have, this is my first time using the soldering gun on these, but it went through the other one so well, I'm assuming it's going to do the same here. So be careful. Oops, two seconds, wow. This is making life very easy. And then you want to put a hole in the top. Can you guys see what I'm doing? And a hole in the top, because you need to have air circulating in there. Let's mark the bottom here of when it's empty, so we know where to put it. Can we see, you see what I'm doing? So I'm going to mark it just about there. So that's how, I, that's where I want it when it's empty. So we're going, I'm just going to cut the top off of this, it's too long. Okay, so when it's empty, I want it to sit there. So that's where we're going to make our cut. That makes it actually much easier, doesn't it? So we make our cut here. Is this making sense to you? I hope it is. Okay. Take you over there. And that's going to sit in there and then it'll rise and fall. So I put the glue on here and now I'm going to pop this in, okay, make sure this is completely dry because otherwise the glue won't stick and okay and we're going to do the same again. We're going to put our glue around here. And this time it's kind of important to put the pot down on this because um, there isn't a lot of space for the float in this one. So once you kind of have it, you feel like you have it adhered, you can then probably turn it around. This glue doesn't take long to dry. It just, it dries in like, you know, a couple of seconds really, enough that you can turn it over. So now we can turn it over it's glued in there and again I'm going to do the same I'm just going to take some extra glue just to make sure that it's held in place so how far do we want the water to come up I will zoom in here so again we're going to pour our water in can you see that our little um, straw came up so I just went above the two holes Okay, so just enough that the water can get in, but not too much water can get in. So let's mark the top of this. So that's how high we want the water to go. So now there is Matilde in her palm with her trellis. And there's palm all over my counter. Not a good luck, guys. Though somehow better than soil. <laughs> Certainly easier to clean up. And we're going to take our watering can. Again, my liquid dirt. And we're going to fill until our little float. You should slow down because it just takes a minute for it to go through and sometimes once it's, once it's rising, it, you can see there, it rises pretty fast. A little. 
dribble for a good measure. Okay, so there you go guys. <clears throat> okay guys, so that is it. Hopefully you can take something away from this video and you don't of course have to use all these methods. So these are just all the methods that I have used um, and I'll, I'll alternate between them, whatever suits me at the time. I did a lot of cuttings this morning in just the plastic cup and um, they're sitting on my kitchen table and hopefully they will root away. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you watched till the end, don't forget to put that green heart emoji in the comments. And thank you so much for joining me guys and have a wonderful day. You take care.